welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be sewing up the Heartbreaker Wallet by KS Kona Designs. Kim has designed an amazing wallet for her Heartbreaker line. This wallet comes with many different snap tab options. It holds six cards or five cards and one ID. And it has two cash slots and a little zipper pocket on the back. I really enjoyed sewing this. Um, this is my second and it won't be my last for sure. It is perfect. It does not fit in the 90% Heartbreaker, but it will fit in the regular sized and larger Heartbreaker. I would rate the Heartbreaker wallet as an adventurous beginner. It's not overly complicated depending on your materials, though it could get a little risky. Um, I would recommend the least stretchy as vinyl possible. If you're on a domestic, you're also going to want it to be kind of on the thin side. Um, but this is Lux Vinyl from Mormino. It really doesn't have any stretch. And it's the best version of this wallet I've made yet. So I would definitely recommend a non-stretchy vinyl. Thinner is better for domestics, although I used the Lux Vinyl on my industrial machine and it was great. I would um, say this is a one bobbin wallet. I didn't need to change my bobbin, although I did check it, but it was fine. And edge painting is not required, but it does give a nice finish. So I will link the video here um, for my edge painting tutorial. And I'm not saying I'm the best edge painter, but I'm not saying I'm the worst either. So there's that, right? Okay, let's go. So let's go over the pieces we're gonna need for the Heartbreaker wallet. You're gonna need a main piece with your zipper pocket cutout, and it will need to be interfaced either with Decaville Light or Decaville Heavy. I like Decaville Heavy personally. This vinyl is Hot Pink Dreamy Glitter Luxe vinyl from Mormino. So I have this for the exterior main. That'll be what you see on the outside. For my lining, I'm going to use the same vinyl. You could also use a waterproof canvas. Something non-fraying is the name of the game here, friends. So this will be my interior. Then you're going to need to cut out your left and your right pocket, along with the cuts that correspond. I'm using the same vinyl again, but I've cut out my ID window, my card slots. And for the right side, I cut out my card slots. For the liners on these, I'm going to be using waterproof canvas. Okay, and these will be the corresponding backs once we build our wallet. I'm just trying to cut down on thickness. We're also going to need an ID lining. I'm using the same waterproof canvas. This will essentially be what goes behind. So you could use any kind of woven any cute fun prints but that's what you're going to end up seeing through the window i'm also using some glitter tpu with a really fun heart cut out you can cut out any shapes there's all kinds of leather punches from amazon i've linked the heart ones in my amazon storefront then you're going to want to pick your snap tab option i'm going to do just the heart but you'll need the front and the back of the snap tab and apply a little bit of stabilizer where you're gonna put your magnetic snap. And then on the front snap tab, the one you'll actually see attach, like you'll see the front of this one, apply your other main stabilizer. I'm using Decaville Heavy here. My machine can handle it though, so use the proper interfacing for your machine. I'm also having two zipper pocket linings. I'm just using the same waterproof canvas again. You'll need a corresponding zipper. I'm using number five zipper tape, and I do not believe, it doesn't matter if you use three or five. Here's my pole that I'll be using for that. Some kind of logo or ID badge, something. I'm gonna use this cork one I got from the Heartwood and Hyde. And you're also gonna need two card slot linings. Um, in the pattern, they call for it being one long strip. I just did two 24 inch strips because that's how big my ruler was. 
I am going to try this water resistant canvas from Mormino. And the last thing you're going to need is a magnetic snap. I just discovered these teeny tiny little magnetic snaps from Mormino. They're like literally so tiny and they work great. So I am probably going to try one of these, but you can see um, in correspondence to the snap tab, they're so tiny, but I think they'll be great and they'll definitely stay out of the way. I do know they're pretty strong as well because I've used them already. So this is what we're going to use for our magnetic snap. And that's all we need. So let's go ahead and get making. The first part we're going to build is our snap tab because we need to get this cutie edge painted before we finalize our wallet later. So using the piece that we've fused a little bit of stabilizer to, this is where we're going to install our male magnetic snap. So go ahead and get your pattern piece and mark the dot for the center of where the washer will be lined up. Let me just go ahead and get my washer out here. So you're going to use the male portion. Okay, I'm just going to line this up here and just mark this dot and that will be the center of our washer, just like that. Do you see? Using the washer, line this up right in the center. And you're going to want to make sure if you're using a regular sized magnetic snap, you want the prongs to go this way, okay? I mean, I guess it wouldn't really matter either way, but you just, these this dips down here and you don't really want your prong to get in the way of that. So I'm just going to mark these little tiny side wrong entry marks and get your cutting utensil and cut just these are so tiny they don't take much but I'm gonna just cut those little holes and then a little go ahead and slide these make sure you cut everything off See how tiny that is? It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And because you have the stabilizer here, you don't have to worry about it being floppy, kind of how it is now. This is the back anyways, but there you go. Go ahead and get your washer. Pop that cutie back on there. I'm gonna fold my prongs in. You could fold them out. These are so tiny, we could fold them out. All right, let's fold them out, why not? I like fold them out better anyway. There we go. Ta-da! Now I am going to put a teensy, well, I guess we wouldn't really have to put a teensy bit of duct tape on there because we have this on the front. But I guess better safe than sorry. I like to use um, this 3M3903 tape. I always put it on the back of my stuff. Don't ask me why, I just do. Now we're going to want to put the snap front onto the snap back, okay? We want to line this up so that we can tape it, or that we can stitch it, I'm sorry. So I'm going to just get some double stick tape here and run this. Let me get that out of the way. Just run a little strip here. My machine can sew through this, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just going to... Actually, what I think I'll do is I'll make sure, I think I did on this one already, I like to singe along the edges because I am going to top stitch, but I kind of just need to make sure all the little fluffies are gone. Pretty sure I already did this though, but 
this is essentially what you do. Just kind of singe them. Regular liner works fine. This is linked in my Amazon storefront if you're interested. It's nice because it's refillable and I go through a lot of liners. All right. Just peel off your tape and adhere the back of the snap tab to the front of the snap tab so that we can top stitch them together. Now line them up as best you can. This does matter so that your edge painting goes pretty smooth, okay? You can use a Cricut cutting machine um, or any cutting machine. The pattern does have SVGs and there's tons of different shapes and styles of these snap tabs. So it's fun to play around with. All right, now we're gonna top stitch all the way around the outline of this snap tab. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and top stitch. I'm gonna top stitch with the right side of the snap tab up with a four and a half stitch length. The reason I'm gonna go so small is because when you have curves, the smaller your stitch length, the, the neater it'll look, the smoother the stitch line will be. If you got a big old honk and five plus stitch length, you're gonna be very like, ee, 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 ee. okay? We're gonna go ahead and start down here because we can back stitch and this will be in our seam anyway, so it doesn't really matter. After we top stitch this, we're gonna go ahead and edge paint it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a card here as a link to my edge painting tutorial that I'll be using, but I won't be showing myself edge painting in this video. So let's get going. Hand cranking will be your best friend on this curved snap tab. I'm going to go ahead and move you so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. I'm hand cranking and keeping this foot right along the edge here. I'm using my knee lift and slightly lifting up as I need to when I'm going around, okay? That's my cat. She's mad she can't come in here and mess up our video. Can you hear her? All right, I'm just hand cranking here. Make sure all your edges are staying lined up well. There's nothing worse than looking on the other side and realizing you didn't catch your liner. And this is why I'm very glad I'm using those teeny tiny little snaps. They do come in every color as well. And no, she does not pay me to say nice things about her. She's just that awesome. I don't really do that pay me for saying crap anyways. doing it we're doing it so I just move my needle down I'll rotate my see how I'm always making sure my foot is right along the edge okay and I'll just lift it and adjust it a little the reason why I like um, a stiffer like Final for this is because it doesn't show any feet marks from my teeth on my feet dogs. All right, do you see how the needle, it's kind of in line right here, okay? But we really need it to be where it's an eighth of an inch away from this side, okay? So we'll need to go down one more so that when we rotate, it'll be still an eighth of an inch around here. It's kind of deceiving, but keep going this direction how we've been going. 
And before you put that needle down, go ahead and lift up your foot and kind of look. Engage it to where it's about a half an inch away from this side, okay? So that it's coming like that on the curve. So I think it's about right there. And then when we rotate, perfect. See how it lined up again on this side? following that curve around for your heart. Now you see putting this here, it's almost even with this, but you're gonna wanna keep continuing like the heart is still going this way, okay? Till you're in half of an eighth of an inch away from this side. So keep it going like it's the heart's edge is still there, okay? And then before you place that, go ahead and measure it out here. You can move your stuff around a little. I do it all the time, okay. See how we continue to go down here? Now we can come this way, okay? Should be pretty much a straight shot from here. And then we'll check our opposite side and see how we did. The Decaville Heavy tries to push my foot off, plus this is more of a slipperier glitter vinyl, but you just gotta stay kind of vigilant until you get to the end here and then backstitch. Perfect, hopefully we got close enough. Let's check out our stitches. The only thing that can make this machine better is an automatic thread cutter. Okay, so you can see the front here looks gorgeous. Okay, let's check the back. And it looks great. We caught all the liner. Okay, now at this point, you could go ahead and go around with some scissors. Do you see how this back, the front comes over a little bit? I hand cut this, so it's not going to be perfect. But you can just trim it now before you edge paint it. Be careful. Try to keep smooth cut lines. I'm going to get my bigger scissors. Just how that's a little dangly over, we're just going to trim that down a little bit if I can catch it. There it goes. Okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of move this around. It was kind of twisted like this, and you don't want it to be like that. So train it now. Get that Decaville heavy in there, kind of a little bit more flimsy. You don't want to go too crazy because you do want this to stay stiff, right? That's your snap top. Boop. Perfect. God, that's so build our zipper pocket. You're going to need your two liners, your zipper tape, and your zipper pull. I'm going to use my lighter and take off these furry edges on my zipper. And go ahead and install your zipper pull. I don't use anything. I just pull it apart. Slide one side on and hold it. Slide in the other. And then the trick is, see how it's crooked right now? You want to kind of rotate it till it's straight. And then once you have them straight, push them on. If these teeth are lined up, you're good to go. All right, go ahead and take your liner right side up. Get your double stick tape and run a line of it down this long edge. Peel off the backing and place your zipper right side up on top of that. So both of these are right side up. At this point, you can baste if you'd like to. I'm not going to. Take your other liner and do the same thing. Okay, and you're gonna put this zipper right side up on that. So essentially, 
both right sides of the liners will be touching each other. Perfect. Okay. You got yourself a little zipper pocket, Sammy. Now go ahead and get your exterior. It will be the one with the cut out zipper box. Get your double stick tape. You're gonna run um, a line of tape on each, top of the zipper on each long edge here. This will help us hold it in place as we sew the zipper in. You're going to want your zipper pull, okay, the arrow to go upwards, right? Because we want it to close upwards into our box. I mean, you could do it downwards, it's really up to you, but I'm going to do it this way, okay? So, laying it flat on the left edge here, go ahead and pull off the tape for that side only. And you're going to center your box onto your zipper, okay? Get it pretty close to the tape so that it's even, and then stick it down. Pull that little zipper pull through. But essentially you want it to where the teeth of the tape will be in the center here, okay? And that's when you know, okay, stick it down. This side is just gonna be hanging out over here, okay? We're not gonna worry about it. One side's not connected. Just lay it like that. We are going to stitch just along here. You're gonna start an eighth of an inch above this edge so that once we come down when we're final stitching, they can meet right here in the corner, okay? Start here, needle down, sew to an eighth of an inch past this edge here. And then we're not back stitching. You could, but we're not. And we're gonna pull our thread tails to the back and tie them off, okay? I'm gonna switch out to my zipper foot to get as close as possible. Since we did a four and a half stitch length on our on our snap tab, we're gonna do that for all of our top stitching on this bag. Make sure you pull your thread tails long, since we are gonna pull them to the back. And then slide this till right, like I was saying. You want your needle to go down about an eighth of an inch from this edge right here. Okay? So I always just lift my foot and look. Oh, we're gonna, we're not close enough to the edge of this zipper box. There we go. Push that down, okay? And you see how these are even on each side? So that this teeth hits right in the middle of the short edge. Okay, let's go ahead and stitch down till the other side of this long edge. I'm gonna hold my tails and go. When you're coming up on your zipper, you can lift your foot up with your needle down and pull that up a little bit out of the way, if it's in your way. Now go ahead and fold this one liner side down, okay? Just finger press it. You could go use your iron if you wanted to. But finger press it out of the way. And then now you can fold back this other liner and remove this tape from the other side of your zipper. 
and flip it over, it should kind of just automatically fall nicely into place. Pulling down this zipper or this uh, liner we already stitched in place. Get out of the way. And that should just stick right down. There we go. So this is what you have. All right, now we're gonna start finishing this where we left off, stitching on the box. So we'll come here, we'll come over the zipper, down this long edge, and back up here, finishing in the hole we started in. We are not back stitching. We will be pulling thread tails to the back again. So line it up, put that needle down in the hole you stopped at, and I like to hand crank over the zipper teeth hump. And we're basically gonna keep going straight until we're an eighth of an inch away from this edge again, okay? Lift up your foot and check where you're going down. That's really not quite enough, but I couldn't do another stitch, so I'm just gonna manually move this a little bit. With your needle in place, Twirl her around. See how we did that? And we'll pull this to the back in a minute. All right, come down this long edge. If you're coming up on your zipper, you could unzip it if you need to. I don't need to. My I'm using a zipper foot, so it's not in the way. All right, come, you basically now want your stitch, your last stitch on this side to be even with your first stitch on this side, okay? About right there. I'm gonna hand crank until I'm close. All right, this last stitch will be even somehow, so let me lift up my foot check it out even if it's a little teeny tiny stitch just get it even you can't notice that it's teeny tiny I promise all right put your needle down rotate and it should pretty closely line up with this okay I'm gonna hand crank over my teeth I feel like hand cranking over teeth helps my teeth uh, and my stitches not go wonky okay Coming up to my first stitch. Now lift here. This one's not going to quite make it. So make sure it's kind of in the middle of your last stitch and your stitch you want to end in, okay? Just to make it appear even, even if it isn't perfect. The eye can't tell if it's 4.3 versus 4.5. And see this? Now it's right down in the first hole we started in. All right. Pull this out. And now we can go ahead and flip it over. We'll pull our thread tails to the back and tie off again. I like to do three knots. I don't know why I just do them. turn it over we can see our zipper box looks pretty legit you can pull your pole all the way up that looks pretty damn good to me all right now we need to sew our liners closed we're gonna need to trim these up a little bit um, you can't have this all down in here okay so I am going to trim it down and then we're gonna stitch this closed I'm trimming down this liner and the zipper so that they don't get caught in my final top stitch where I add um, where I put these together so you basically want to keep the liner on the inside of this stabilizer okay so we're definitely gonna trim this way 
and this doesn't have, it's not like exact science, cut one inch here, blah, blah, okay? Just keep your stuff on the inside here. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna trim this down to about right here. Just peel it back, the tape's probably sticking. Cut that zipper, okay? And then I'm gonna make a little angled cut here. So all this is in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and fire these, fire, I'm going to use the lighter and singe along this zipper edge because it probably will fray a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and with it right side up, pull this back, okay, pull it back and sew along these edges. So you'll basically be sewing these, okay. I still have my zipper foot on, and that's probably helpful for this step. I'm just going to pull this back a little. I probably shouldn't have trimmed the zipper down so much, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, just kind of close up the box the best you can. enough to have this sewn shut. I'm also just gonna try to flatten this out as much as possible here. So that's perfect. Now everything's done. I think I lifted up my Decaville Heavy a little right here. I'll probably just go iron that back down, um, but it's really not too necessary because it will end up folding along this edge. So. All right, that is a completed zipper pocket. All right, let's move on. Now we're gonna finish up um, preparing our exterior by installing the female portion of our magnetic snaps. So these are the 10 millimeter snaps from Mormino. So using your pattern piece, please mock E hole. Boop. That easy. Get your little washer. utensil. This is not my normal one. I hate this thing. I feel like I am going to cut myself. Look how, look how loose it is. It's so cute. Why do I love miniature things? I love the minis. Okay, put this washer on. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold these little bad boys out. To the left, to the left. Get down there. All right, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape. It's not necessary, but I like to use it. I've literally had this tape. I have had this tape since I started like five years ago. What? I know. That's probably a pretty sound investment, but this is all I use it for. To attach the over the prongs of installed hardware. Alright. Our exterior is completed. If you wanted, you could add like a little bag tag or something here. Put some here. Some accoutrement. We're gonna move on. Time to build the inside. Ooh, yeah. I just can't get over this. She's well broken. All right, let's go. Now we're gonna build the left 
pocket, okay? The one with the fancy schmancy window. Uh, my friend, I also saw, instead of doing a square, she did like a star. Um, it was amazing. Hopefully I can put a picture in here to show you. It's an, it's an idea. It's an option. I didn't get that fancy, and yes, I'm doing glitter on glitter, come at me. Okay, we're gonna install this right now. So you're gonna need your left pocket lining and exterior, and you're gonna need your little doodad. And I will say, you don't really need a cutout for this clarity window because your card will stick up a little so you could easily pull it in and out. But in using this wallet yesterday on the first one I made, it was nice to be able to push through here and push it up, but you can just grab it. So this is really just like bougie girl stuff, you know, like don't worry about it if you don't want to, but it's pretty fun. You also need your ID lining. And you'll need one of your strips of, we're gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna be too thick. We're gonna experiment together, but I don't want to see the lawn fabric, right? Like you can see the black through here and I dislike that and I don't have any other kind. Like get the Ollie Fun in like white or something. That's what I need to do. But we're going to try this because it's the closest color that I could find that would complement it. It's not even really the right color, but you know. Sacrifices were made. We're definitely not doing waterproof canvas because we're not insane. That insane is what I meant to say. Okay. Go ahead and take your, if you have a side you prefer up, like this one, do I prefer this or this? This one looks sparklier on this side, so I'm gonna make this my back. And we're gonna put, I still have on my um, zipper foot, I do find it works best. I'm just gonna put it out there. All right, put some tape around the window. I'm just actually gonna put the top and the bottom. I'm saving resources, okay? We're gonna peel off the backings. Boy, that could be an Olympic sport, huh? How fast can you peel off the backing? <laughs> all right, I've already burned all these edges, you can kind of see. All right, now line this up. You're kind of wanna put the top, you're kind of wanna, what kind of word is that? You're going to want to put the top of the clear in between the first cut line and the box of the ID window. Okay, kind of line it up. Smooth it down. Smoothing. We're smoothing. We're smoothing. Make sure your heart's in the middle. My heart's pretty good in the middle there. Good enough. Good enough. No, it's not good enough. Nope. We tried. We tried to overcome the OCD and we could not prevail. A lot of glitter. I hope if you buy this wallet, your heart sparkles like this. Okay, that's just sparkly. All right, now we're gonna stitch around the entire box at an eighth of an inch. We're gonna start up here. Once again, we will be starting an eighth of an inch of this line. Okay, boop, like right here. And we'll go down and wrap up, back, finish in this hole. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Our thread tails are long. We're still doing four and a half stitch length. You'll pretty much just use that stitch length now, okay? So I'm gonna slide this guy in here and with my foot lifted up, I'm gonna kind of place it with this number, eighth of an inch up here, kind of. All right, right there looks good. It's lining up with the edge of the foot and the edge of my window. So now we go. not quite far enough so I'm just gonna zhuzh it is not probably the proper term but I'm just gonna move it zhuzh it just a little so that it's about an eighth of an inch down okay nobody will notice this stitch is a little bit longer than four and a half promise and if they do you just block them and move on bestie because we don't need that mm. boom look at that poor fiction all right come down this way repeat to the end actually at this time let's go ahead and pull this 
pull the tail. Pull it now and I'll tell you why. This, when you put your last stitch in here, if you get in between these threads, it's possible to put that last stitch through the middle of a thread. It drives me bananas. It's so hard to like parse out which tails go to, it's a nightmare to me. It makes me very sad, muy sad. I don't know how to say sad in Spanish. Hmm. All right, let's go down. I'm going off the rails here. Do you see what's happening? Dislike immensely. We're gonna stop now. This is how we're gonna fix it. This is what I get for just using a zipper foot. It happens, trust. All right, what we're gonna do, where are we gonna pull our threads back to? About here. All these ones are bad. Pull the stitches, okay? Pull them out. It's fine, you're not gonna really see the stitch marks, okay? this thread to the back and tie it off. It's because I was trying to talk into it. That's what I get. All right. Now that this is tied off, we will singe it once we do all of our threads. Here, we might as well tie these while we're here. Let me know below if you like this camera view. I'm not gonna lie, I totally like, was inspired by Oakley Roots. Cause this is how I learned. With her little camera in between her body like this. Bird's eye view. Okay. Now we just need to do a row of stitching from here to here, okay? Nobody will know. Nobody will know. Now, Pull your thread tails long. Oh my gosh, I have no nails. And I have no nails because of my job. I type like 350 words a minute, so you can imagine. Nails don't work well. Put your needle down right in that hole where you ended your stitching, okay? Hold your stuff. Hold it. Hold it. We're going to hand crank. We are hand cranking, okay? good okay if you had a regular foot on it would be great right now you wouldn't really have an issue because it could grip over here but I don't like the look of the teeth gripping on my clear window not to mention also mentioning I forgot okay we're just going down okay we're going down to this hole right there you see it it's kind of hard to see honestly this white thread but that's why I pick the white thread and I suggest you match your thread as well because it just makes it easier. If you're, if you're wanting to be bold, then use a contrast color. All right, down right in this hole where we started, okay? Pull it out. Now let's look at the line. It's much better. Well, I'm not sure what we did there, but it's fine. Nobody can see it, it's white. Our thread tails to the back. <laughs> Come on. Come on, work with me. I would recommend for the card slots for these left and right pockets, just the exterior at least, use a 
I don't want to say thicker vinyl, but you want to make sure your vinyl is not really stretchy because if you're using stretchy vinyl, your card, box, card pockets, uh, your, these little slots, oh, I moved you, I'm sorry, I was into my neck. Um, these card slots will get wonky real fast. Okay, we don't want to act like we're at the wave pool at the water park. We want them to lay down nicely. So yes, we have four little spots now. We need to burn down, singe them down. Okay, perfect. Okay, add a little free check there if you want, but. There's our pocket. How cute. Yeah, that looks a lot better. See, you can't even tell I really went off except for that stitch right there, you little turd. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the card slots. Let's go back to the main area. Okay, get your car, your ID window backing and then add the double stick tape around all the edges. Now we're gonna lay this on top and we're gonna have this come up right underneath the middle slot, okay? Kind of center it in between the holes here and you can trim this down once we already, once we like sew it on, you know? But I would recommend having this kind of like centered on there. Okay, look how cute that looks. All right, now what we're gonna do Is we're gonna we're gonna stitch a quarter inch around so from this box it should become right above up here and then a quarter inch from the edge so you're gonna have like a little box all the way around okay it'll look good promise let's go okay I did switch back to my regular foot because we're gonna do a quarter inch away from this stitching so I won't see my feet marks on this stuff because of what it is and because it is like a slippery. I just didn't want to have this situation again because that's annoying. So go ahead and start a quarter inch away from this stitching, which my foot here lines up right with that. So I'm just going to start and go and we'll come back up around and come down a little bit again, but it's at the 4.5 stitch length. If you want it to be super extra, you could line up this first stitch with this first stitch. Why not? Okay, let's go. you put that down and make sure it's about a quarter inch you could measure if you wanted to be real extra yeah that looks about right you're down and we were wrong <laughs> see how this is gonna go over right here do another do another i don't think we're gonna want a full one we're gonna want a little tiny teensy one i think wallet 
will really be elevated if you take your time on your stitching. drew with a air racing marker and it was great. But I can't do that on this wallet unfortunately because of the substrate of my because of the spinal. Okay, there we go. So this kind of pooped up a little bit. Do you see this? And that's because I think I didn't put that stick of double stick tape down each side, so I mean you can't really tell them. It's just me being annoyed a little bit. Okay. Yes, we're gonna go up around this little hole here, okay? Because we want to come a quarter inch from here, which would be the top of this. So I'm just gonna hand crank. mush down this cart, you know, make sure it's staying down in the right spot. And then, watch your fingers, you want to go to the ER. Now, this one, you got to make sure it ends in line with this, right? So, it perfect and then stitch down till you get to the beginning hole right on the money not quite so I'm gonna go halfway in between both points even though there'll be smaller stitches you won't really be able to tell does that make sense yeah all right now we can pull these to the back and tie them off about that. Okay. I would not recommend starting your stitch line by a card slot strip, okay? Like, not where the actual cut line is. is more flimsy anyways, you know, just to keep the integrity of that small thin strip of vinyl. Okay, there are those. Turn those down and then get your scissors and pull this up and trim this down. Okay, you don't need all this stuff here. this side too because this will have the backing put on it eventually and I don't want to make that seem thicker if I can avoid it. Okay. This side too. This will be our final stitch for the top stitching. There we go. That's all we're gonna mess with though. Now we can build the card slots, but you can see here, pretend this was my ID. See how it sticks up a little? But now you have this too, you can, but you can already reach up here. So it's not really kind of pointless, but <laughs> it's cute. It's just cute. And you can see these line up really nice along this top line here. You can get these at Carolina Little Stitches. It's like her card slot templates. Nice. They come in different colors. I have like eight of them because I use them when I take pictures of wallets. <laughs> yeah, I'm that, I'm that person. 
so it's good for vertical and horizontal. See? Boop, boop, boop. All right, now we're gonna build the card slots. So we're gonna make some markings on the back of this. Come over here, my dear. Okay, on the wrong, so this is your middle card slot. You're gonna measure three inches down from this line, kind of line it up, all right? And then take some double stick tape and stick it right along where that three inch mark would be. You're also gonna take some tape and place some under this card slot, this opening, and then half an inch above. Okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. But try to get this one pretty good down here. Now what you're gonna do is take your lining. This is water resistant canvas. It has a smooth side and a rougher side. You want the smooth side to be facing down. So your right side is facing down because I want the slippery side to be what my cards touch. Remove this tape. Place it about right, like half of an inch over the opening for the card slot. Make this straight, dude. Make it straight or you're gonna be upset because your card slots are gonna be boop, 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 boop. Okay, make it straight as possible. All right. Flip this over and we're gonna stitch just underneath this opening in the middle, okay? Lift your, use your knee lift, lift it up, make it so it's like an eighth of an inch away and start it like right at the end of this hole here, okay? Hold your thread tails because you're gonna pull to the back. Push down on this opening so it kind of stays flat, okay? You're gonna go until you're close to this other hole, okay? Remember where your stitch ends. Done. Okay. Pull it out. Flip it over. And pull your thread tails to the back and tie off and cinch. Do the whole shebang. If you're using that lawn fabric, do not do this. Ollie fun, do not do this. Do not, do not singe your threads. You will burn the, the card slot lining. Ask me how I know. So you kind of just got to... Tie it off, put a little fray check, and say a prayer. Nothing will happen, though, but I'm just saying. Um, I like to burn things, so. That's why I thought, well, this might be a good option. It might be kind of thick, but the vinyl on the actual exterior is thick, too, so I'm thinking it'll be a pretty sturdy wallet, hopefully. I have a matching heartbreaker that this can be sold with as a set, so we're crossing our fingers. All right, there we go. You can also put a dab of freight check if you need. Now fold this down, okay? Fold it down and finger press. Finger press the crap out of it, okay? Finger press it. Now take off this bottom tape here. Just not the whole tape. You know what I'm saying, right? Backing. There it goes. Now when you're pulling this down, don't pull too much, okay, on your little opening here because you don't want the opening to be like stretched but try to see I was off just a little bit and you see how the card slot like wants to go bop yeah it's annoying happens to us all try to keep them lined up okay now at this point if you have one of these cool doodads it does help but you put the tape at the right area so when you fold it up like this Okay, keeping everything ready. Don't pull it off of the tape, but pull it right up from the tape like this, okay? You see? Now, if turn it over, check it. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. That goes in a little too much for me. I want the line to line up right here. So what I'm gonna do, holding this in place, okay? I'm gonna pull this up off the tape a little bit until it's like, right on the money okay pull it up take off this tape back in here for your top card slot and then press it down okay you have a little sticky here that's fine that's fine if i use eighth inch tape i bet you wouldn't have done that 
And now this card will only go in that much because I wanted it to match this, right? Do you see? Matchy matchy keeps your heart happy. It doesn't rhyme, but it's true. All right, then with this up, we are going to stitch here, okay? Down here again. Start, put your needle down in the same spot. If you do the same spot, it really looks cohesive and lovely. Those thread tails long. They are, oh, right on the money, right on the money. All right, go, hold down this opening here so they're kind of even. Coming up to this ending hole. And check. Check yourself. Right now. Check yourself. Is this hole even with this? It's not. So go again. Go again and make me even. Why wouldn't you? You're already doing it. Take the time to go the extra mile. It makes a difference. Okay? Boop. Alright. We're almost done with this whole pocket. Let's take a break in. Final my edge paint, finalize my edge paint. Oh, see, look, this is coming up a little bit. You could, you could just take this tape off here. I'm just gonna get some thinner tape. This doesn't need to be stuck down. It really doesn't, but it's nice if it does stay out of your way, right? There we go. All right, pull these thread tails out. Uh, the pattern says you're going to put another piece of tape half of an inch up from the bottom fold of this first one. So you can do that. I'm just going to get that little tool again and put it in the pocket for it and just fold it right where it's at, okay? And then I'll eventually add a little tape behind it like we did right here. I like to be more precise. Even if you measure, sometimes it just goes off. Okay. Nicely fold this down. Don't pull too much on that little thin, delicate strip there, okay? Remember, this is delicate because it's so tiny. You don't want to stretch it. Now, I'm going to get the little tool, and let's just insert it till it's lined up. Mm -hmm. This isn't really old, that's why a lot of my markings are gone. Okay, from here, because I turned it over, oh, I just moved it. Now look, look at what I did. Okay, let's get this vinyl sticky on my surface. Fold it now. Triple check. Triple check. All right, that's good. And I'm gonna go ahead and just undo this piece of tape and lay this down, okay? I'm gonna add a piece of tape under here just to kind of hold it flat. My, um, my, Advice for water resistant canvas, do not iron it at this stage because this stuff does shrink, okay? So just be mindful, it does shrink, finger pressing, rolling is best. Or iron it before you cut it, one of the two, okay? So now you can see this one's good. You could be done at this stage and just trim this off. On Kim's pattern, she recommends you top stitch above here, and I agree, and here's why. It tends to, once this is sewn down, want to pop up like this. Do you see that? That's what it will do. It will do that. So I want to adhere that down. So I'm going to just do one final top stitch um, right here on this side. Okay? Then I'll trim it off. But I just recommend it. Live and learn. I thought, oh, I'm going to skip that. And then I'm like, of course she put it in there for a reason. Here. And 
make this last stitch even with this stitch here. Okay, there you go. Now you are done. This isn't too poofy, especially because the back of this pocket is going to be water resist or waterproof canvas. I think it'll be great. So we're just going to tie these off and then we'll put our lighting on it. We'll be done with the left side and then we can repeat the entire thing for the for the right side pocket. So the only thing I'm going to show you is me attaching my logo badge over there. But it will be the same process. I'll just do a time lapse of it. Okay, there we go. Make sure you do this very top stitch on the other side as well because it does make a difference. I'm gonna just trim this down. Now we're gonna take our liner, right sides together. Look how nice that is though. You could have been consistent and done this top one here if you wanted to, but I, I'm not doing all that. Look how even it is. You see how our lines all line up? That's nice. All right, right sides together on this. And we're gonna stitch this at a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we will fold them away from each other and top stitch. this away and flip it back. Okay. I'm gonna add some clips here. I definitely like the waterproof canvas of the liners on these. I did mine on my last one and it was okay, but this is better. It'll be easier to manage at the end when we Go ahead and top stitch down this straight edge here. I'm gonna back stitch. You could tie your threads to the back if you wanted. Just try to keep the lining folded behind the exterior if you can. Okay, I'm going to singe this because you will see these otherwise. All right, that looks nice. Okay, that is done. Looks great. Let's do the other side. Okay, I have this cork label from the Heartwood and Hive. 
that I'm going to attach right down here like this. Next show, I'm going to just singe the back here. Um, this is a cork, but it's a little bit of a fuzzy back, so I'm going to get a piece of double stick tape. I'm going to use the quarter inch because it goes really well right down the middle. So Kim likes to add hers three quarters of an inch from the bottom card slot opening. So I'm gonna use this ruler. I got this ruler from Missouri Star. I love it because it helps my old lady eyes see what's happening. Carolina Little Stitches also um, carries a similar colorway. Okay, I'm gonna just line up this inch line on here and then I'll be able to center it pretty good, I think. It's just as wide as the opening cuts, basically. But remember, we're going to have half of a quarter inch gone from this side here when we attach our lining. So that looks good. We're going to go ahead and sew this on. I just start in a corner, go down, and around. I use a little piece of waterproof canvas to protect this printing that they put on here. I would recommend doing that. So just put our needle down in the corner. I'm going to start actually down here. And I'm going to pull my thread tails to the back. But I just line up this little piece of waterproof canvas to protect the printing. Three inches down from this bottom card slot, we're going to put in a piece of tape again. The bottom card slot opening, okay? Put your piece of tape in. And then below each opening and then half inch above the top. Peel it back in from under the first card slot. Remember, right side down, centered, pointing up about a half of an inch. Okay, press that down, turn it over. We're gonna stitch under this first one.
if you wanted to not use the card slot template tool, um, you can just do a half inch up from every fold and it should get you pretty good. Okay, remember we're gonna top stitch above this one just to keep this card slot from going like that once we're assembled, okay? Trust, you know, the lining part on the exterior part. I'm going to use this half inch double stick tape and I'm just going to go across here. I am going to keep this away from pretty much where I'm stitching. Okay, I've applied double stick tape um, on here. Go ahead and peel away the backing and adhere it to your exterior. If you wanted to save bulk, you could also just do like waterproof canvas. Make sure these are lined up pretty well. Or you won't be happy when you have to top when you have to uh, edge paint. great. Now you're going to go get your snap tab and then we'll put on our left and right pockets, final stitch, 
and be done. But you can see how cute is that? Okay, you're gonna go ahead and put your heart pockets on the corresponding size. Try to make it as even as possible because once you sew, you don't want to miss. It happened to me on my last one. That's why I'm telling you, okay? I literally missed the lining. I was so upset because it just looked weird with the stitch lines going off the tracks there. We can trim this, see how it's up a little bit? We can trim that, don't worry about that. We'll try and make all that even if you, if you want. Now we are going to take our snap cap. We're gonna snap it. Somebody asked me, does this, is it strong? Yeah, it's strong. It is strong. Okay, we're gonna fold this in half like it's an actual wallet. Be careful, be careful. Especially if you have decoval heavy like me, you gotta kinda train it, right? Now, let's see how we kinda want it like this. sides here pretty well. Slide this around and then let's see how we kind of want it like this. So we're going to slide it in between. Here, let me take this one clip off. We're going to slide this in between these back layers here to know kind of where we want it, okay? I'm going to guess we're going to need a little bit of clearance here for a card once it's loaded. Alright. We're going to top stitch with the exterior up. Um, I'm just going to start down this corner. We're going to do an eighth of an inch around and then we'll do a quarter of an inch around. Then we'll go ahead and sew this middle spine. Um, it does recommend a back stitch over where the pockets attach and where the snap tab is right here, like on these parts. So we'll do that. I'll probably end up just pulling my thread tails to the lining of the wallet and tying off and singeing and using fray check. I would use fray check as well, but you can try and pull it in through these um, middle layers. I tried that, it was really hard. And then when I went to edge paint, I had kind of a bump in the wallet over the knot. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna start over here at an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna go in a little bit more than that because um, just to make sure I get all the layers since I did mess up on my last one. And I'm gonna push this little guy in. We probably need a hump jumper would be helpful um, to get over that if you need it. So I'm gonna walk my, I'm just holding my thread tails and you can see it's pushing my point of my pocket out. So we're gonna push that in. And then stitch it down. Okay, it looks like it stayed in there pretty good. I'm gonna do one more stitch. And I'm just hand cranking at this point. Now I'm gonna back stitch one. Since my thread kind of matches, it should be alright. You could hand crank this whole wallet if you wanted. It's up to you. It's getting pretty easy now that I'm on this part. Just make sure your layers are all even.
go forward one, back stitch one. Oh, that scared me. Holy bejesus. Be careful coming down off the snap tab because it might want to skip a stitch. Alright, we're in the clear. You can see we're gonna have to trim. That's okay. That is a okay, my friend. As long as your edges of your pockets stay under where they're supposed to. for this part because it's basically going to be going down a bump and I want to make sure I get it right. Okay, now we can rotate. You might want to put um, some kind of protectant for your vinyl right here. I'm going to use that piece of waterproof canvas just so it doesn't cut it. need a hump jumper. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to hand crank to make sure I have more control of this situation. Let's lift our foot. You can see it's probably needs one more stitch, I think. A little one, not a full one. Okay. That's pretty good. I went over a little, but that's all right pocket is right here so we're gonna hand crank around all right I think that's the pocket I can kind of feel it um, I'm gonna go forward one and back stitch Just tie these off. Let's find, I think it's this one. Now before we do our second stitch, I am going to trim my overhang that I can see my exterior in some places it moved a little, which is fine. I just want to trim it all up before I do my last round. And then we'll do our straight lines and we will be done straight lines down the spine, I mean. I would recommend to really be careful on the spine trimming or so, stitching because I kind of had issues with it my last one with it being a little 
crooked. So right now I'm gonna back you up. I'm just trimming where it went over here. See? You really should pick one or the other, whichever one has the most overhang, the interior or the exterior. Mine's the interior overhang, so I wanna make it everything flush with the exterior if possible. Especially because when you edge paint, you want these surfaces to be equal. It makes it much easier. Okay, there you go. It's pretty good. Make sure you're keeping your scissors like totally flush with the edge. Don't have them at an angle if you can avoid it. Otherwise, it'll go in. Um, too far. Careful for your snap. Now we'll do our second stitch. Um, instead of starting right here in this corner where I have this little tie off, I'm going to start in this corner. Start down here, go straight and up and around. It looks pretty dang good. Way better than the first time I did it. Like with everything, the more you practice, the better you'll do. So this is my second one. Okay, all that's left to do is to stitch down the spine here. So you're gonna start, I'm gonna start in this corner and go up to this corner, over through the stitch lines here at the eighth inch and then back down and through this bottom here. It just kind of will help it to bend naturally but you can see, snap that cute in place, there you go. So the little magnets do hold. Somebody was asking me that. I just wanted to show you. It's cute. Best one I've made yet. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stitch down the spine. It's my air erasing marker. Yes. Sweet. It will wipe away, so be real careful. I'll show you in a sec. Okay. You can see the line 
ones now. Do you see them? I tried the silver market bin. It's just too light. We're going to actually, we'll just start up here. Uh, pull your thread tail long. Make sure you have enough bobbin. Hopefully I do. I'm just going to wing it here. Start up on this top corner. See, it's going to naturally, I'm going to put on my... zip foot because of the pockets. The pockets want to push my foot and that makes my stitching crooked, which drives me batty. So I'm going to do a zipper foot. Okay. The zipper foot will just run along the inside spine so that I don't have to worry about the pockets. You can kind of see the bump of the pocket right here. Alright, just go for it. This is the most structured wallet I've ever made and I freaking love it. I just wiped off that um, air erasing marker. Look at that. Do you see like the puffiness? I fucking love that. Oops, I didn't mean to cuss. Look at that. All right. Let's go ahead and pull this last tail through. Tie it off, singe it, fray check it, and then we can edge paint this bad boy. I'm not gonna edge paint with you on camera, but I will come back for the intro to show you how badass it is. Also, just like a little tip, um, you should always watch to the end of my videos. There's always fun. Mischief and me. Oh, this is the best one I've ever made. It's going to be the best wallet I've ever made. It's so structured, I love it. We'll just... See, because we stitched that down. Do you see why we did that now? Do you see? Now you see. I'm not giving you no bad advice. I, If I'm making a YouTube tutorial, like a real one like this, it's because I've made at least one and I'm giving you the right stuff, okay? Definitely do the waterproof canvas on the lining of the pockets. Like, whoa. Whoa, bro. This is the best I've ever edge painted. Uh, snapped up. See, now because we have these little stitches, these are nice little bendy marks. They're bendy points. You're telling your wallet who's boss. You're saying you're bending here. Okay? That's where you're bending. And you're snapping. And you're living your bestest, happiest little heart wallet life. Alright. That is a little <laughs> One side, perfection. Another, perfection. This side, perfection. Look at that. Look at that. Won't you look at that? 1,000 bajillion percent recommend Lux Vinyl. This wallet, Lux Vinyl, stop. You're unstoppable. You are unstoppable. Okay. 
That's it for me. Holy cajoli. That's cool. When life hands you hearts, make a freaking wallet.